My name is Alessandro Vannucchi, I am an hematologist and I work as an associate professor of hematology at the University of Florence. My name's Dr Claire Harrison, I'm a consultant haematologist at Guy's and St Thomas's Hospitals in London in the UK. Drs Harrison and Vannucchi are among the authors contributing to the blood review series on myeloproliferative neoplasms. Myeloproliferative neoplasms are a group of disorders of the hematopoietic stem cell. They were uh, actually initially recognized by William Damaschek in 1951 when he thought that these different disorders could be grouped together. As we think about the myeloproliferative neoplasms, of course, this is an umbrella term for a large number of different disorders. Usually we think about polycythemia vera, central thrombocythemia and primary myelofibrosis, but there are a number of other diseases that are reflected in the review series. These include, for example, mast cell diseases, chronic neutrophilic and eosinophilic disorders. And in fact, as we've had advances in our understanding of the biology of this condition, then our understanding of these individual entities and the key differences between them, which we must focus on not only scientifically but also clinically, become increasingly apparent and this is something that we were trying to reflect in our review. In this review we also made a point that many of these disorders actually have a spectrum of manifestation and complications that uh, involves uh, different fields of hematology. For example, one of the commonest side effects and complications and also the leading cause of death in these disorders, especially polycythemia vera and essential thrombocytemia, is thrombosis. And so this actually calls for a strict interaction between the expert in MPNs and the expert in vascular disorders. As we look back over the last 100 years in this field, there have been many changes, particularly in the last decade, triggered by uh, advances in scientific research, principally the discovery of the JAP2 V617F mutation, which led first to improvements in diagnosis, making diagnosis more accurate, more rapid for patients, and then in more recent times have led to the development of novel therapeutic strategies, principally the JAK1 and 2 inhibitors, uh, at the moment that being ruxolitinib, but with several other therapies in mind. Our manuscript uh, provided some evidences about what is the suggested and recommended therapeutic approach to, to the patients with MPNs. But at the same time, we think that we have to look forward. And here, the fact that there are so many drugs that are under clinical evaluation is, of course, important because we, we can really hope that one of these, alone or in combination with some other drugs that we already have in our hands, might really make a change in the way we manage these disorders. But I think that an important point we still have to consider is the patient by himself. Now we have one target drug that is not a perfect target drug because it is targeting one protein, but it is not targeting a mutation. I mean, it is targeting the activated JAK2, but it is not targeting the mutated JAK2. And so this is not the, uh, the best we might have in terms of precision medicine because this is a very nice drug, but it may be, it's for most of the patients, but some patients also miss the response after a while. So we really now, I think, are in the position to start thinking about the individual in terms of diagnosis, approach, general approach to the patient, and also drugs, conventional drugs, and especially new drugs that might come. I completely agree. I think this is a field where the philosophy of personalised medicine is really coming to the fore in terms of thinking about how we manage these patients. So we're taking a deep dive, we're looking at all the biological characteristics of the patient. For example, in essential thrombocythemia, probably in the coming years, we'll be thinking about managing patients with calreticulin mutations differently from JAK2 mutations. But we're also looking in a very kind of omnicomprehensive way at, at the patient. We're thinking a lot about how is the patient feeling. We appreciated a lot about patient symptomatology and impact upon their lives and try to measure how we can bring a better 
treatment paradigm for those patients. And as always in medicine, we've got a lot more to do, but we've made a lot of progress in the last 10 years. This is a new uh, understanding that now we have, and so we have to be very careful about this, and we have to spend a lot of time with these patients in order to ask and learn the patients. So I, th I think, again, that this is the result of these advances and the experience that some of us uh, have gained in this field in the past years. I think that blood and specifically ASH has many contributions potentially to make in this field. The myeloproliferative neoplasms are disorders which are treated by the vast range of haematologists and so um, bringing advances uh, forward, making the opportunity to increase awareness of them, leading the way in terms of clinical therapeutics is really very important and a massive um, impact that ASH and blood in particular can have in this field as well as many others.